I'm interested in uh, uh, trying to understand uh, how pancreatic cancer uh, grows and develops. And so I'm interested in trying to find novel molecular targets, like, a, like various proteins or enzymes that we can target to make drugs against. And so I'm interested basically in, in, in validating novel drug targets for therapeutics in pancreatic cancer. Okay. So the pancreas is a organ in the digestive system. It has two major functions. It's, uh, it makes digestive enzymes to break down various foods that you eat, as well as it makes insulin uh, hormone that help to help control blood sugar levels. And so those are the two main functions of the pancreas. And so the pancreas is made up of different cells, and all of those cells can potentially become bad over time and become cancerous. Uh, the specific cells type that I study in the pancreas are cells that align the pancreatic duct. So there's a duct in the pancreas where juices, digestive juices, get dumped into to aid in digestion. Well, cells that line that duct can become cancerous and, and, and lead to ductal adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. And so I basically study that particular type of pancreatic cancer. And again, the idea is to try to find novel drug targets um, that drugs can be made against to hopefully better treat that particular cancer. So pancreatic cancer is the fourth most common cause of cancer deaths in the U.S. Um, it's believed about 45,000 people will come down with that cancer this year. Of that 45,000, about 38,000 will die, so a very high mortality rate. The problem with pancreatic cancer is that we can't detect it early enough. And so unfortunately for many patients, uh, when they get diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, it's already metastasized to other parts of their body. And it's the metastasis that unfortunately um, kills the patient. And so the idea is if we can try to find better ways to diagnose it early, then um, that should hopefully help with um, being able to better treat pancreatic cancer patients. Sure. Another issue we have with pancreatic cancer is treatments. Uh, for surgery, only about 10% of all pancreatic cancer patients are eligible for surgery. And even then, that still doesn't guarantee survival, long-term survival. Uh, chemotherapy, uh, many of the chemotherapies we use, uh, the pancreatic cancer becomes resistant to it over time. And radiation is usually resistant to radiation. And so at the end of the day, we don't really do a good job when it comes to treating pancreatic cancer. And so the, the goal for me and many other researchers in this field is to try to, one, find ways to better diagnose it early, and two, find better treatments for it. Uh, so that's believed to be two causes when it comes to cancer. That's believed to be a genetic component and or an environmental component. So as it relates to pancreatic cancer, in terms of the environment, smoking is one of the major risk factors for pancreatic cancer, as well as chronic uh, pancreatitis, uh, long-standing diabetes, Alcohol hasn't been, there's not a strong association, but there has been some suggestion that alcohol potentially uh, could cause some issues as well. So, so there's various environmental risk factors that can lead to various cancers, such as pancreatic cancer. There's also believed to be a genetic component, where basically you can develop a mutation in one or more of, uh, of your genes in your cells that are responsible for controlling cell growth. So there's various genes that are involved in the development of pancreatic cancer. One of the main ones that, that scientists have discovered is a gene called KRAS. KRAS is a proto-oncogene, which is, means a gene involved in normal cell growth, but it, when it's mutated, it can become an oncogene. And it, again, it's mutated almost 90% of all pancreatic cancers. So almost all pancreatic cancers have this mutation in this gene. And so that suggests that that gene, that mutation may uh, contribute to the development and tumor maintenance of, 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 of cells that can lead to cancer. And the challenge with RAS is, there, is that there are many different types of RAS. There's KRAS, which is the one I'm specifically focusing on because that's the one that seems to be most prevalent in cancers. RAS has been studied for many years, about 30 plus years, and, and we haven't been successful with targeting, with making an anti-RAS drug in the clinic. And so the idea is, well, if we can't target KRAS specifically, maybe we can target um, a protein or a gene downstream of, what, of, of RAS. And that leads me to my particular protein of interest called PIM kinases. There's a family of these kinases. Um, it's PIM1, PIM2, and PIM3. And they're oncogenes, just like RAS. You know, so they're involved in cell growth. 
um, and they also are involved in um, inhibition of cell death, apoptosis. So they're, they're oncogenes needed for cell growth, but they're, they're anti-apoptotic, so they prevent cell death. And, and, and it's believed that these genes um, uh, may be involved in um, contributing to some types of cancers, such as pancreatic cancer. And so in, in my laboratory, we are trying to uh, validate these kinases, these PIM kinases, as possible drug targets in pancreatic cancer. Now, pancreatic cancer is resistant to radiation. That's what makes it really tough to treat. And is also very resistant to chemotherapy. And so previous studies in the literature have showed that PIM kinases in other cancers um, um, was, was responsible for radio resistance, being resistant to radiation treatment, and being resistant to chemotherapy chemo resistance. And so we wanted to see if we were if we were able to inhibit the activity or expression of PIMS, would that make pancreatic cancer more sensitive to radiation as well as chemotherapy? And we were able to show that when we you know modulated PIM expression, you know, through genetic means, as I mentioned earlier, or by using a chemical inhibitor against the PIMS to shut down its kinase activity we were able to make the cells more sensitive to radiation exposure as well as to chemotherapy treatment, um, suggesting that potentially in the future, uh, PIM kinases uh, inhibitors um, in combination with other drugs or with other uh, treatment modalities may serve as a uh, better uh, way to treat pancreatic cancer patients. But one of the things that I'm excited about is is here's this target I'm studying called PIM kinesis. Um, various pharmaceutical companies, in which I you know in, in which I collaborate with, um, have two actual PIM kinase inhibitors in phase one clinical trials now. Um, so they're being tested, I think, on um, uh, leukemia patients. And so I'm excited because again. I'm hopefully involved in adding to the body of knowledge that may one day help treat various patients with different types of cancers, um, including pancreatic cancer. So, so that's what gets me excited, being able to try to figure out what's going on um, and validate these PIM kinases as possible drug targets. Um, and then to, to know that pharmaceutical companies are actually pushing you know, these drugs you know, through the clinic to hopefully um, uh, get, to, get them to patients is, um, is really um, humbling and exciting feeling.